right around like high school, it was like, I just cannot wait to move out, turn 18. So I don't have to go to church anymore because it was in my eyes, kind of like boring and dull. And yeah, what's crazy is I had a friend in high school who sent me an audition that the Florida Marlins, the baseball team, was having an open an open call for dancers for their dance team world. And they don't care how old you are. As long as you're a pretty girl, they'll let you do anything. But like I, because I could sing, I just happened to meet producers that had studios and kind of started doing that whole thing and fell in love with writing music and produce like recording and like performing and eventually got signed with an independent label who at the time I had a relationship with the owner and believed him, you know, because he was my boyfriend. So I trusted him to take care of me. Ended up getting a recording deal with Universal Republic um, and was working on singles, had songs on the radio. Uh, I opened up for Nicki Minaj. You could just Google my previous name, CC Segura. So I was just, yeah, it was just songs on the radio performing for all sorts of A-listers and doing radio tours. And I would just feel this overwhelming sense of fear. I felt the Lord saying, there are demons here, but you let them in. But I would ignore his voice because I'm like, I want to do what I want to do. Let me just make this. Let me make this dream come true. Time when I was working with this producer, we were working on my first album to get me shopped to get a, a major deal. Like he's worked with big names. And so he was like, hey, so you know that if you were to sell your soul to the devil, you can have instant fame tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Hi, welcome to Touching the Afterlife. Today I have with me Christina. Christina has an amazing story and I can't wait for you to hear. So Christina, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Julie, for having me. So can you just share with us your your incredible story, but how where did it all start? Oh man. So as we spoke briefly, I was brought up in church. Literally, um, Sundays were in church from about 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And my parents both served in church. Like my mom was an usher, my dad was, you know, did something in there. I know we were always in church. And so I was raised in the church. I was in the choir, I was in the youth group, like everything. And Right around like high school, it was like, I just cannot wait to move out, turn 18. So I don't have to go to church anymore because it was in my eyes kind of like boring and dull and unrealistic because certain things I would see were just like very exaggerated with like, you know, the traditional Pentecostal movement. I just didn't have the revelation that I do now. Um, but I always had an understanding of the Holy Spirit, but from an ignorant perspective, like I knew God was real. I knew he loved me, but because that sin, you know, God took care of your sin was preached so hard. I thought that grace was like, well, I can live my life. And when I'm old, I can serve God. So yeah. that's where grace comes in, in my mind. And so I just couldn't wait to kind of go into the world and live my life and pursue my dreams, which were, you know, music and dancing. I grew up dancing ballet. I grew up singing in choirs and singing in school and um, yeah, I just couldn't wait to really pursue my dreams because my parents raised me that, you know, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can follow my dreams. And they were a little liberal in that sense where they allowed me to kind of venture off. But I didn't realize that I had prayer, <laughs> praying parents, like severe praying parents in the background mm -hmm. when I did venture off that were mm -hmm. just covering me in prayer. And nice. yeah, that's kind of like how my upbringing was. So from there, you, you, you weren't satisfied. You were a teenager. You wanted, you know, to experience the world. You were talented. So what, where did you go from there? Yeah. What's crazy is I had a friend in high school who sent me an audition that the Florida Marlins, the baseball team was having an open, an open call for dancers for their dance team. It's kind of like the cheerleaders, but it was where you have to have formal dance training. And I was 17 and you have to be 18, but because I guess I was good enough, they let me in, I auditioned. And that was kind of like the the turn of events, I would say, where I became more mm -hmm. exposed to the world mm -hmm. and, you know, was getting a lot of like fan, you know, admiration and stuff just from being in that environment. And I also, mind you, this was in Miami. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very much more freeing for, for that world. And they don't care how old you are. As long as you're a pretty girl, they'll let you do anything. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like my intro into the world's pers 
world, you know, out of church and into the world. Yeah. And just, you, you went right it, in. <laughs> I went right in. Yeah. Like yeah. there were it was like open doors. Like I even mm. like the club scene, like drinking, I wasn't really big on drinking and I never really did drugs. Like the only drug use I had did was weed, but that was much later. Um, but yeah, my parents did a really good job teaching me not to go down that rabbit hole, but I was still exposed and around it. Um, mm-hmm. And doors opening opportunities, like I, because I could sing, I just happened to meet producers that had studios and kind of started doing that whole thing and fell in love with writing music and produced like recording and like performing. And I was like, yeah, this is so much better than performing in church. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And all these opportunities were happening. You were totally talented. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So I ended up getting signed. Like I was recording different demos and would perform in local clubs in uh, Miami beach and would just meet people who had access or had uh, connections and eventually got signed with an independent label who at the time I had a relationship with the owner and believed him, you know, because he was my boyfriend. So I trusted him to take care of me. Um, Really he was exploiting me for my gifts, but I, I was naive and very young. And so eventually climb that little ladder or not even little ladder. It's a very deep, deep, steep ladder, but ended up getting a recording deal with Universal Republic. And it was like a indie, they signed the indie label, but it was for me. So it's a a very interesting contract, but, um, and was working on singles, had songs on the radio. Uh, I opened up for Nicki Minaj. I opened up for, um, who was it? Not Pitbull. Oh my gosh, it's so, so long ago. I don't want to throw names. You could just Google my previous name, CC Segura. Oh, just seeing it gives me the cringe because that whole name itself is a whole story, but just how the enemy likes to rename you and the power that comes with our name that God gives us. There's an anointing on your name. But anyway, mm, so I was just, yeah, it was just songs on the radio performing for all sorts of A-listers and doing radio tours and just loving it all the while feeling like I was disobeying God. But in my mind still, he'll forgive me because that's what he does. Right. Mm. So I'm just going to keep running this race. And eventually when I'm 50, Lord, I'll serve you. But when I got between those rock and hard places, like I almost was in an airplane crash and I, uh, you know, oh, you almost got crashed. It. Oh, an airplane. Yeah. The airplane descended for like, well, fell like five, for five seconds. I was flying somewhere. I was doing a lot of uh, flying around, you know, to record and perform and stuff. And so uh, a piece of hail had smashed the window, the pilot window, the very front part of the plane. So they had to descend very quickly. And when you, when we did plane, you could see the windshield was completely white because had that windshield broken, we would have gone down. But you know, when those moments of life or death, you're like repenting, right? Or you're like, Lord, forgive me. So I had a lot of those moments. Hmm. But um, yeah, it was just like, I, let me do this first, Lord. And then mm-hmm. you can come, I can, I can serve you. It was just a very naive way of thinking, but all the while still knowing that I was disobeying him because I would get that little voice. Don't be here. You don't need to go here. Like, you know, pray or go to church or, and I would just ignore it. Don't hang out with these people. Don't drink Mm -hmm. that. Don't smoke that. But I would ignore it because I loved my life too much. Mm -hmm. I loved my way too much. And I remember Mm -hmm. um, just the more I said, no, I didn't realize the more I was inviting the demonic into my life, the more I said no to God. And I remember being in studio sessions with big names and there'll be like snorting lines of Coke. And I never did that, but I was around it. And I remember writing songs, writing lyrics that were almost like blasphemous, like just blasphemous because that was very edgy. Like, you know, a lot of the lyrics and songs now are very much against the kingdom of God are very much against his law and his love for us. And so I was, I would feel sometimes where I'm writing in these writing sessions and I would just feel this overwhelming sense of fear. And I didn't know what it was in my mind. It's like, I I felt the Lord saying there are demons here, but you let them in, but I would ignore his voice because I'm like, I want to do what I want to do. Let me just make this, let me make this dream come true. But God's hand, man, he really shielded me from some crazy stuff. Like just to give a, 
short example, I would be in rooms where I didn't know at the time I had friends who were being, you know, kind of molested and I was right there, but it never happened to me or mm-hmm. like just, just weird stuff, crazy stuff that would happen to my peers or just women around me, but never happened to me. So mm-hmm. I knew, like, I know now my parents' prayers really shielded me as I was out there in the darkness. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, I just, I really wanted to pursue music my way. Cause I'm like, I don't want to sing old church hymns. Like, I don't want to just be, you know, in the row, but that was just my ignorance and just, yeah. Well, the funny thing is not funny, but how God is so amazing. And that you said, okay, God, when I'm ready, when I'm ready, but he doesn't work like that. You, <laughs> tell us about when he was ready and, and you were ready because he came to you what was or maybe he didn't actually come to you just tell us about that experience now so I had actually I guess that would be like a two-part so the very first time when I was working with this producer we were working on my first album to get me shopped to get a, a major deal and we were taking a break from recording this album and he took me around the studio and this is someone who's been in the industry like he's worked with big names and so he was like hey so you know that if you were to sell your soul to the devil, you can have instant fame tomorrow. And when he said that, I I really don't want to say his name, but but it was a producer I was working with. Yes. A music producer I was working with. He actually said those words. He actually said those words. And, and he took me away from like my team. So he had me by myself. So Mm. it was like a whole lot happened in that moment. Like I, like discernment happened in that moment for me that I, I never really experienced before. It was almost like he made a mistake in his career and he was using me to try to get to where he really wanted to be, but he yeah. didn't want to sell his soul. So he's like, but if you sell your soul, we can go high. And it was like, in that moment, I received all this knowledge and, and, and a huge, just, I can't, what I can explain was like a, something fell on me. And I fell to the ground where I could not stand. And I started weeping and crying out to the Lord saying, forgive me because I wasn't living right. And so when he said that, it was almost like, what, what have I done? How, how deep am I in this disobedience place? Mm. So I fell on the floor and I started, you know, just crying out and saying, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything without you. Like, you know, the true nature of who I am. Like I wanted him to forgive me. And after that whole thing, I look up and the man was sitting on the, on the, it's like he fell, I guess, cause he was sitting weird and his head was down as I was praying and crying out to God in front of this man. I did not care because the conviction behind his words really hit me. Mm. And so after that, I kind of ignored it. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. So let me just try to alter certain things. Let me make sure to not show too much skin or may, may, let me make sure to not say curse words. I was trying to like fine tune this, per, still, still pursuing my dreams, but in a way that was still honorable, but yet not really fully committed. Got so it. I realized yeah. you can't, you can't side mm-hmm. note, you can't half yeah. halfway your, your walk with the Lord. It's either all or nothing. Yeah. But I would say a, about a year later, I was further along. I didn't have that deal with Universal Republic then, but, and I did it at the following year. So now I had the record label deal. I was I had a different uh, manager, like a really big manager, um, meeting with huge people. And I was just almost like, yo, this is it. It's just literally one, one yes. And I was going to be the next, you name it. Like, that's how close it was. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't realize that the Lord was keeping the doors closed for a reason. But I was, I I was on my way. I had a trip planned. Sorry, let me slow down because I'm I'm just recalling everything. But Mm -hmm. I had a trip planned to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. I was dating this guy. Like, I just was not living right. Just, just ignoring the Lord, ignoring the unction of the Holy Spirit. And I had all these things planned. I mean, so many things were planned. Concerts were planned. Um, I think I had, and I clubbed a lot, so I'm, I'm sure I went to the club that night, but I went, I was in New York and went to my, I was staying at my manager's place, which was a little 400 square foot uh, studio. So I'm laying in the bed with her, which I shared her bed because I couldn't afford a hotel at that time. But um, I had, 
I don't even want to say a dream anymore. It was definitely a vision or an out of out of body experience because I felt more alive and more alert than I do right now talking to you. Mm. Like I, I, I felt my, my soul felt everything. It's like my fingertips could breathe. Like it was, I was so alert Mm -hmm. and it, I, it looked like I was in space and it was almost like I could hear, I could hear, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I could hear the vibrations of things. I don't know if it were beings or, cause I was clearly not in the presence of God. I was in the presence of the enemy. I, I actually, I didn't even tell you that yet, but I was not in the presence of God, but it looked like I was in space and beneath me was I, in my mind, it was the earth. It looked like the earth, but it wasn't in the shape of like your traditional globe. It was, it looked like a pool and I could see the stars. And in the very far back, I saw like this, it looked like the sun, but it wasn't, it was just like, like a distant lake of fire. It looked like that. And I remember thinking, oh, am I, am I in like in the spirit realm? And then this being approaches me and he's all silhouette. Cause there's, you know, he's not illuminated. He's just dark. Mm-hmm. And as he's approaching me, he's huge. Like he's bigger than the, than the earth. He's bigger than that lake of fire area. And he's approaching me. And as he's approaching me, uh, I said to him in my ignorance, Lord, cause I, I knew I, I didn't know if he was God. I didn't know if he was an angel. I didn't, I knew he was someone powerful. I didn't know who he was. And he said to me, no, you know who this is. But when he spoke, it wasn't audible words. I felt the words. It felt like bass, like vibration. When his words hit Mm -hmm. my soul, I would vibrate like, Mm. He said, no, you know who this is. And the moment he said that I knew it was Satan because I was not living right. I knew I was constantly turning my back against God because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I knew this. I was full blown, well aware of my sin and was saying yes to my sin and no to God. So I was like, oh no, did I just die? Am I going to hell? Because I knew I wasn't in my body. I, even in my ignorant mind, I knew I was in the spirit somewhere. And so as he said, you know who this is? I'm like, no, no. I immediately became covered and just overwhelmed with fear and started saying, no, Jesus, please forgive me. Forgive me for, oops, sorry. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me for cheating. Forgive me for ignoring you. I'm just going through the whole list of things that I knew I was doing wrong. Mm. And he was genuinely scared. I, I mean, this- scared. I, I literally thought I was going to hell. I thought mm. for sure, a bit for sure. The fear that I felt that the sensation of being separated from God hit me. The mm. moment he said, you know who this is, because I, there's just a knowing that you have. I can't even really explain it. You know when you're this in God. You know so real to you. This was so real to you. This more, is more real than me waking up every day and being a mom and being a loving. It's more real. It was more real. And as I'm going through the list of Lord, forgive me. He told me to shut up because it was like he had something to say. He was like, if you worship me, I will give you all of these things. I will give you. I forgot the name of a, of a man. He named some guy because I really wanted to be married. I really wanted a healthy relationship. He named a guy. He said, I'll give you fame. I'll give you success. I'll make you the world's bi- bi- biggest star. And when he's saying these things, the earth became like one of those future balls that like witches use or like psychics use to show your fortune. It mm-hmm. was doing that. It was showing me things as he was saying them. And I was looking at it and I'm like, no. I'm the daughter of Christ. No. And it's like in that moment, the moment he started saying, if you worship me, I'm like, oh, I'm in a, I have a choice to make. And I chose the Lord in that moment, Mm. like for real. And he said, after I said, no, I'm the daughter of Christ. He Mm. called me the B word. Never forget it. Wow. Word. And I flung a little, for lack of a better word, I flung back and I woke up with a gasp, like, I just snorted right now, (laughs) but, and my heart was racing so fast, even waking up that felt less alive than I did in that moment in the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, just not in the presence of God. But I, I got out of bed. I called my mom. That's the first person I could think of to call. And I told her what happened and she started crying. She began to pray over me. I was in the bathroom at that point. 
And she just, you know, praying over me, speaking in tongues, like just praying over me. And I'm, I'm like on the floor crying out to God, like, forgive me. And just for him to have his way in my life. And then after that, I had canceled all my plans, all my trips, told my label, I need to go home. Something happened to me. I told my manager at the time and she was like, oh, it's just a bad dream. You know, I'm like, this was not a dream to shake me like this. This was not a dream. And so she's like, okay, we'll take your, take a weekend, you know, and then we'll, you know, we'll talk about what the next plans are. I went home and that Sunday I went to my, my church at the time. And he was just so happy to be talking about the three heavens. Like the first heaven is like, you know, our sky, Second heaven is space. Third heaven is where God dwells. And I didn't know this, but I'm like, oh my God, I was in the second heaven. I was in the space where I didn't really realize a lot of de- demonic activity is. And that's where that scripture mm-hmm. comes in, that the prince of the power of the air, mm-hmm. the ruler of darkness, because he was dark. I couldn't see features. I saw just like arms. So you were taken to that away. second heaven. And yeah, I was taken to the second heaven. And I... I honestly think that it probably would have looked different to me had I been in darkness more, like had I not have the prayers of my parents covering me, it probably would have looked like he probably would have looked beautiful and he probably, it probably would have looked more glamorous. That's interesting. Because I had a knowing Mm. and the covering over me, I was able to see a little bit and discern, oh, this is not it. You know what I mean? Like, because I had a knowing I was raised in the word of God, but I chose to like, pursue right. my own life. So like, um, yeah, there was just a lot of, uh, of confirmation that happened on Sunday. And then I just spoke to a friend that I grew up with briefly and told, told him this is the dream I had. And he believed me. He's like, wow, the Lord's calling you home. And I was like, I think he's telling me to say no to everything and just drop everything. He's like, he will honor you with your sacrifice. And, and I, I, I felt the genuine spirit behind him telling me this. So I called my label. I told him I have to, I have to stop. I have to stay home. I have to just seek God. I can't do anything right now. And it was so, it was interesting how very hands off they were after that. There was no Mm -hmm. fight. There was no making me feel guilty. There's all this money was spent on your project. You're going to have to owe this and that. There was none of that. It was like the Lord had gone before me and took care of all that where I could truly focus on him without these distractions trying to weigh me down. And I just want to point out, first of all, it's commendable that you yielded to God and what he was calling you. And then he yeah. made it made a way for you so it wasn't too difficult. But yeah. the fact that you were at this pinnacle, this height of the cusp of being this huge, successful, talented star, and you said no. It's literally the goodness of God. Because I had I had experiences with the Holy Spirit as, as a youth. Um, and it was almost like what, what a teen does with their parents. Like, you know, they love you. You know, you're not supposed to stay out past curfew, but you do it anyways, because you're, you just want to do it. Like, there's no, I don't even know how else to explain it. At some point you get over that phase and I'm not, I'm not condoning my behavior. I'm not condoning disobeying God, but I just, I didn't have a revelation that I do now that the prayers of the righteous avail much. The prayers of my parents truly covered me. And being raised in the word, it's like, no matter what happens, if you're, if you're God's, you're his, no matter what. And he pulled me, he pulled, he used a scare tactic. And I, I'm so thankful. He gave me the fear of the Lord in that moment. And I believe if the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom mm-hmm. and you need wisdom to know God. <laughs> and like, it, it's just crazy how he really struck me with fear in a, in a, in a very holy way. And I'm so thankful for that. He knew how to get me to face him. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm glad to hear this. And can you continue with your story from after you took the sabbatical, then what happened? So after I took this, the long sabbatical, um, I went on a fast, I fasted and I read the Bible. And for the first time, it was my first time fasting. I think it was about 24 at the time. And it was like, I, the sky, That first fast, man, I could discern things I never discerned before. I was reading the Bible for the first time and like understanding it. And it was hearing the Lord more clearly and seeing how he gave me those gifts for him and how the enemy likes to bait us and entice us thinking that 
the world's ways are much more fun and more freeing and, and just better. And Mm -hmm. it just showed me too, how like, unfortunately, unfortunately the church could be better discipling the youth. You know what I mean? And I wasn't truly, I, I don't even want to discredit that because God, God's all, he controls everything at the end of the day. But I, but I do know that discipleship could be better, better over the youth, at least at that time for me. Mm-hmm. And he just gave me a love for him. And so I end up, he ends up telling me to move to LA because I was in, I was still in Miami at the time. And so I left Florida. My parents were in Florida. A lot of my friends were in Florida. I left and moved to LA. And I was like, well, I, I can still pursue acting and I can still do music, but this time I'm going to, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to seek you, God. You know, and it wasn't like a strict, like a whole 180 convert. It was growth, right? I had to like really pursue God and seek his counsel and seek his will. I made mistakes along the way. My desires for certain things were still there, but he had to really replace them with Mm -hmm. his desires for my life. And that just came with, you know, him introducing me to a church out in L.A. I met other people who were truly on fire for God, young people my age who Mm -hmm. had their own experiences still wanted to act and sing and different things like that. But they were really like, let's seek what God wants for us. And I found true, true Christians. So we would have prayer groups and Mm -hmm. we would serve more. Like the moment I started serving too, it got me out of myself and into like, God, what is your will? Serving is so important. And so like I started serving in my church and I started meeting friends who I'm still friends with today. And God just started replacing desires. And I still, I would, I would, um, I got an agency out there. So I was doing some acting and commercial modeling and I would still try to like, you know, record some music, but it was different this time. It was like, I'm going to, I'm going to sing for God. And I might get a little pushback here and there, but I'm like, it's fine. I'm still going to write it right this way, not that way. And so, but it was training, you know? And so like, I would still have experiences. Like I remember the first time I got baptized in the Holy Spirit because I told you I was raised Pentecostal. So I would see this people falling out, but was like, that's fake. Those tongues don't, that's fake. You know what I mean? Like God, if, if tongues are real, I want them. And I would pray for that. Never, never spoken tongues. And then I was at a friend's house. I was still smoking weed. I didn't feel convicted in that area just yet. And I was still drinking occasionally, but the Lord was like, he said, you know, he, every day is a day of salvation. So he was saving me every day. And One night I was at a friend's house and I was, I was always feeling the Lord calling me, like spend time with me. Let's, let's come, come seek me, come before me. And so this one particular night at friend's house, they were, they were drinking and smoking. I'm like, okay, guys, I need to go home. I can't be in this environment. And they're like, what, what happened? And I'm like, I I just feel like God's calling me home to pray. And I was shocked when they said, well, pray here with us. I was like, Okay, y'all are high. Are you sure? <laughs> but I felt I felt the Lord say, "Do it." And I'm like, I'm not no pastor. I don't know how to pray in front of people. I know how to pray with you, but I don't know how to how to lead people in prayer. But I heard him. I'm with you. So I'm like, okay, guys. And I don't know what led me to say, "Get ready," or "Are you ready?" Something like that. It was like, let's not approach prayer like just a oh, thank you, Lord. No, it was like I I mm-hmm. discerned something was going to happen. And so we started praying. I led the prayer and I, I've i never felt, I felt like Jesus. It was, it was like he came into my body full force. That like the full power of him in that moment. I never felt that before. And I was seeing these people for the first time, the way he saw them. I saw their past, present and future. I saw their secret wow. desires. I, wow. I saw so much into their lives. And spiritual gifts for sure. In that it was so heavy in that moment. I pray for it now. I'm like, Lord, now I'm in ministry. I need it. But anyway, but then it was like he was really showing things and, and prophesying to these people. And out of nowhere, there was this one person um who I just saw a dark cloud over the whole time. I didn't know him. He was just my friend's friends. And I'm seeing this dark cloud, and he was like pacing back and forth as everyone else is praying. He's not really connected to the prayer, he's just kind of doing his own thing. And I felt the Lord was wanting to free him. And I, I saw in the spirit is the best way I can put it. I saw this, this demon with horns and red eyes gripping his mind. It had a grip on his mind, like mm-hmm. and on his shoulders and just crouching over him and just would not let go of his mind. And mm-hmm. I remember everyone started praying 
and just falling out. I, it was, these are people who don't go to church. These are people who, I don't know if, I didn't know if they really knew God, but it's like the Holy Spirit was in the room and he convicted everyone. And it was like, I saw this, this demon on this guy. And so I was like, Lord, have your way. And mean, mind you, I'm not, I, I did not know much of the Bible then. I didn't know what the p- purpose of tongues were. I didn't know what baptizing, being baptized in the Holy Spirit was. But out of nowhere, I knew fire was coming because it got hot in the room. Everyone felt the heat. And I knew tongues of fire was coming because I, I said it out loud. And mm-hmm. I didn't know that tongues of fire was a thing. I said, let the tongues of fire come. And out of nowhere, I start speaking in tongues. It came, it was like, um, you know how tornadoes are formed from the sky and the ground? Yeah. It was like that. It was coming from my spirit and also from the sky. And that was my first time speaking in tongues. And I knew it was the Lord interceding for this man, for his freedom. And this guy was a big actor. Wow. He oh, ended wow. up taking his life a few wow. years ago. Praise God. But he ended up taking his life. Like he ended up killing himself a few years ago. And oh. I don't know what happened after that time, but I knew whatever we, whatever was on him, it left because I had the discerning, this discernment that it ho- had hopped off of him and it was crawling like out of the house and the door opened on its own. The door opened on its own that the thing left. Mm. And eventually, I don't know what happened in his life. If, if it came back, whatever, God knows all God has the, the keys of hell, death in the grave. So I, you know, I, but my point is of sharing that story was it's all God's power and all at his will to, to use us in any environment, no matter what it looks like. And he's just looking for a willing vessel. And I had a taste, a small taste of his power and his desire for us and how he sees us. And it was like, oh, I'm never going back. Lord, I want more of you. And it started a whole, like a true convert after that. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in front of all these people. And I didn't know. Wow. Then Dina, I wow. something happened and I was reading scripture and it was like the Bible was a light every time I read it. Mm. There are so many things that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, from that time that I saw, you know, Satan in the, in the vision until now, it was been like a level to level, glory to glory. And yeah. I just want to encourage whoever sees this, like, don't ever discredit yourself or disqualify yourself. It's God's mm-hmm. power that works through us. He just wants our surrender every day, no matter what level you're at of understanding. It's his spirit. As long as you have a surrendered heart, he can do whatever. He can show you whatever. That's good, Christina. And I just want to add too, I, you know, it, it just brings me back to the beginning of your story where you had this desire for the things of the world, fame, uh, attention, all the different things that come enticements. But then when we really surrender and fall in love with the Lord, he gives us those desires. So that example you just shared, it made you want more, more of the things of the spirit, more of the things of God for the kingdom, because we are only here for a short time. We are here to do his work, to do his will and have fellowship with him and to show his glory on the earth, man, show his, show his glory. And to, yeah, to, to not grow weary in the waiting. Cause a lot of our, t- our time is waiting on the Lord. It's really waiting on the Lord and being developed and groomed. And the, the enemy likes to tell us that we need to hurry up and get this, hurry That's up and so achieve true. this goal, rush, hurry up. Look at so-and-so was doing it before you. And it's like, man, do you realize that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. now with social media. And it's like, when you fall in love with Jesus and you realize that he's a prize, mm. there's no going back. And I can see, it's like, now I understand why Christians, true Christians have such a conviction and a knowing that just any other, no other faith or religion has. It's like, because Jesus is the only way to God. He's right. the only way to God. And so like when you experience him every day, you can't, yeah, you can't go back. You, you can, it's impossible to taste and see for the Lord is good. And, and then when you, if you do, you have that conviction. And even as a child, you had that still small voice, but you just kept suppressing it with yeah. your desires. Yeah. Yeah. Desires, man, the desires were what MTV showed me and what BET mm. and VH1 showed me, you know what I mean? Mm. Watching it, you know, behind my parents back, of course, but like showing this glamorous lifestyle that I just was not seeing that the church wasn't showing me, but that's mm. just, you know, 
the level of ignorance that, you know, no one, no one's perfect. No one has a full revelation of God's glory. Not here anyways, not on this, in this body, but now it's like, yo, God is so fun and his plans for us are bigger and more amazing, fulfilling than we could ever imagine for ourselves. And he gives us the desires of our hearts. He really does. And, and it's better than we can imagine or think. So can, on that note, you were single at that time, mm -hmm. but you wanted to be married. Tell us how you met your husband. Yeah. So I said so I was in love with Jesus. I wanted him. I would rush home from work to just spend time in prayer and reading and just having communion with the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, I'm not dating anymore. I'm not pursuing this because I, I had a really bad uh, dating life. I just chose the worst of the worst. And but like, I'm like, I'm celibate. Lord, me and you, I'm going to just please you. And so, you know, my husband at the my who he wasn't my husband then, obviously, but he was just a, a friend who I met through church and we would like hang out in social like gatherings, like through the church functions. And I didn't see him that way because it was just me and God, right? I didn't want to make any more mistakes. I wanted God to choose everything for me. I wanted to make every decision that was okay by him. And my my husband, who was just my friend at the time, we both volunteered at this nonprofit event. I was singing and he was just like helping out. And this was the first time that I, I just discerned he was interested in me because he's like, hey, uh, just do me a favor and text me when you get home. And I was like, oh, man. He likes me. He's going to ruin our friendship. I ignored <laughs> him. I didn't text him when I got home. I, I actually, wait, I think I texted him when I got home. And then he said, Hey, like, let me borrow 32 seconds of your time tomorrow. And I just never called him. So it was a week before I actually called him back. Cause I felt like something was like, just hear him out, which was the Holy spirit. Just listen to him. So we ended up having our first day over ice cream mm -hmm. and he's, you know, there, there are, and especially in LA, there are a lot of people or guys who say they, they are Christians and they talk to God every day, but yet they still want to sleep with you or they, you know, that's like the biggest one. They still want to sleep with you, mm. but he was different. He was like, I'm celibate. I'm like, yeah, but I'm really celibate. I got to <laughs> he was yeah. like, No, I'm celibate. Like I'm mm. pursuing God. And when he said that, it was like, I had this revelation that he was truly walking with God and wanting the you know, God's will for his life. And the whole time I'm dating him, well, we're friends, right? We're just kind of seeing what's going on. I'm, I'm talking to the Lord the whole time. I'm like, Lord, if this is something you have to show me, otherwise let's end this. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Right. And after he said that he was celibate, it's like my spiritual eyes were open again. And I saw him glow like gold. For just mm -hmm. like, like if you have like a water reflecting off your face, like how it moves, it was like that for just a split second. Wow. I to see it. And then it went away. And I heard the Lord say, because he's been faithful to me, I'm blessing him with you. And in return, because of your faithfulness, I'm blessing you with him. Oh, and I was like, wow, and then he showed me, this was all in literally a second. This is how God's out of, outside of time, man. And when you're in the spirit, mm. Anyway, so all in all in a second, I saw his past, present and future. Like he he got laid off from his job. He, he was going through the road to Damascus. Like his story is incredible. So like we were both in this place of Lord, we want you. And that's when he's like, this is a healthy place to bring people together for his will to be established. And so then it was moved pretty quickly from there. We got engaged about six months later and got married about seven months later. And had our first child a year later. Wow. So, and so yeah. how many years ago? So that, how many kids do you have and how long ago is that? So we are approaching year nine. It'll be nine years in April. And we have three boys. We have Luke, oh. who's six, Ezra, who's five, and Micah, who's three. All biblical names, not by choice, may I add. It was mm. not intentional. It was the Lord gave us their names. And... Yeah, it's just like, man, God really, like, he used, he is using my marriage to continue to bring out the best in me and make me more like him and vice versa. And like the anointing on our lives is undeniable. Like, I'm just so thankful that the Lord is so faithful. We are, we are not faithful people at all, but he's making us into being faithful every day with every yes. And I would, I, I, I'm just so thankful because 
when I think back where my life was and what I was orchestrating for myself, I'm so thankful for his grace, pulling me out of that and showing me him, showing me first him, how much he loves me and how, how alive he is and how, how beautiful he is. And it's like, when you have an experience with the living God, there's no going back. You just want more and more and more. And that's what eternity is going to be. We will never, we will never just plateau with our knowledge of God. We will always be growing and in awe. And I think even when we get to heaven, that's it's still going to grow. Yeah. <laughs> you stop. The, in the book of Revelation, the 24 elders, they constantly bow, cast their crowns before his feet and say, holy, holy, holy. Mm. Like there's never. Can't comprehend. So. No. Yeah. yeah. Right. Christina. I just want to reiterate too, you, you have the most beautiful voice and I believe that you are going to still make music and I pray that you do. And it touches many because when I heard your song, I just, yeah, I sing at church. We sing at our church. So it's that's okay. (laughs) But you have, you have a ministry. Um, Tell us a little bit about that and where people can find you. Yeah. So my husband and I felt the call um, a year ago to, to go. That's the word we got was just go. And so we started with what we had and that was our house. And we invited some people over to Bible study. And then the second Bible study, this couple came who actually went to college with my husband and they owned an event space. And they were like, this is bigger than your house. Please use our space for free. Use it and just do whatever God wants you to do. And so we transitioned to their event space. And now we have Sunday morning services and Wednesday evening services. And God is really just discipling people through this ministry. What's the name of it? And where are you? Our ministry is called Activate Ministries in Atlanta. Well, Alpharetta, Georgia. And um, yeah, we also have a YouTube page uh, called Activate Ministries. So we post all of our messages up there. Um, Very, very frequent. (laughs) We post a lot. And yeah, we're it's, God's just doing something, and we're just saying yes every day. And the moments where we, you know, get crippled with doubt or insecurity, He always confirms, always that just to keep going and trust in Him. And so, yeah, we were actually ordained by our pastors in 2019 on my husband's birthday, unbeknownst to us, like we didn't even know that was going to be a thing. Um, and so our church in LA is uh, one church, a Potter's House church under Pastor Trey Roberts and Sarah Jakes Roberts. So they ordained us uh, in 2019 and it's just like they're, you know, blessings on it and whatever God wants to do, that's what we're doing. It's just whatever his will is. I love that. I'm so excited yeah. for you guys. So Thank Christina, you. I just, it was a pleasure to have you. And I just want to ask as we close, what would you like to say on a final word to those that are hearing your story that you would really want them to take away from your story? Yeah, absolutely. More specifically to the parents to never stop praying over your children. They may go through their period of wanting to be detached and pursue their own dreams. Okay, let them, but raise them in the word of God, speak life over them and pray without ceasing over them because God God moves through our prayers and our faith, right? The Bible says it's impossible to please the Lord without our faith. And so continuing to believe that God is faithful to do what he said he's going to do in their lives. And that's to draw him to, to him, to bring them from level to level, glory to glory, faith to faith. And so, yeah, to encourage them that no matter what things may look like, to just continue to pray and cling on to the word of hope, the word of God and before you know it, you'll be like, oh, shoot, my prayers are answered because <laughs> they will be answered. That actually really touches me. Yeah. Um, on that note, would you pray for that? For Absolutely. That? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Thank you, Lord, that as we abide in you and you abide in us, anything we ask shall be done in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for every word, every testimony that was released today, oh God, to just fall on good soil, Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the one who makes things grow. So continue to make our faith grow in you. Continue to water us, oh God, as we read your word. And I thank you, Lord God, especially in this day for more revelation and wisdom and understanding, oh God, so we can be all that you've called us to be on this earth. And I thank you, Lord, for those who are watching this video, who are just have questions and want want mm-hmm. understanding, Lord, that this from today forward, oh God, they will have that revelation of your presence, of the truth in Jesus, Lord, and the freedom that we have in you. 
So have your way, oh God, and bless Julie and her and her fiance's ministry, Lord, touching the afterlife, oh God, and may it just reach the nation's Lord to know you as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. In Jesus' name, amen.